Welcome to today's SeafoodNews.com video, sponsored by the Alaska Seafood Marketing Institute. Good morning. <coughs> it's Wednesday, April 24th. Uh, this is the second day of the uh, European Seafood Show in Brussels, uh, and we're getting mixed reports. Uh, some people say the traffic's a little bit slower than, ever, uh, than other years. Other people say it's quite normal. But uh, uh, my take is that the show is uh, fairly good this year because uh, even though there's a slower economy in Europe, uh, the fact that uh, there are other parts of the world buying fish is forcing European buyers to uh, step up. Uh, they basically don't have a whole lot of choice. Uh, so the uh, sales activity, I think, has been pretty good at the show. Um, in terms of developments, there are, uh, one thing that really is important to note is what's happening with Alaska and MSC salmon. Uh, as you know, uh, Alaska salmon is uh, being certified uh, through this RFM FAO based program um, and 80% uh, of Alaska salmon this year is not going to be MSC. Well, uh, the big question is what's going to the market, what's the market reaction going to be? Well, the answer is the market reaction is business as usual. Most of the Alaskan companies have had their meetings with UK retailers and other customers in Europe. Uh, and basically these customers have told them that they're sticking with uh, their current Alaskan suppliers uh, and that they're going to adjust, uh, even if maybe the adjustment was uncomfortable, they're going to adjust uh, to selling Alaska salmon uh, under this uh, RFM sustainability standard. Uh, those who uh, both in Alaska and elsewhere had hoped that the MSC label itself would provide a big marketing boost uh, got severely undercut today. Uh, when it uh, came out that the uh, MSC uh, uh, program for the rump group of the uh, Perth Seine Vessel Owners Association uh, is not going to include Prince William Sound. Well, Prince William Sound uh, canned uh, pinks, for example, is a big part of what the Perth Seine Vessel Owners catch. And this has really undercut uh, the sort of marketing uh, of certain companies who are relying on uh, being the outliers in Alaska and getting MSC. Uh, now it's unclear uh, exactly what they're going to do. So basically I think this whole um, Alaska salmon MSC issue is going to fade away. The other significant thing uh, that happened here was uh, this announcement, uh, again this is on sustainability standards, of the uh, ASC, uh, the Aquaculture Sustainability Council, about a, a new level of cooperation between themselves and uh, GAA's best aquaculture practices and Global Gap. And these organizations have agreed to start co to coming together to, to unify their standards wherever possible. And this is going to have a big ramification. And the tone that this kind of cooperation represents was really set well uh, by Chris uh, Ninnies in a meeting today of the ASC where he was asked directly, well isn't the ASC standard better than the others? And he replied, no, very clearly, no it's not. Each of these standards has their different uses. And the idea of working together uh, on, on things like feed standards and so forth really is going to maximize the leverage of these uh, standards bodies and of the buyers in raising uh, the level of um, uh, production or sustainability of aquaculture production. A very good move. Finally, uh, it's very hard to get a good handle on EMS. Uh, shrimp prices uh, remain very strong. Um, I did talk to um, uh, one of the officials from uh, CAPMA, uh, the Chinese Aquatic Products Marketing Association. They recently completed a, a international shrimp conference um, in Guangzhou and what was said there was that uh, people are really selling to China. He said that EMS is, is a real problem domestically in China, that it's causing a lot of the Chinese buyers to uh, uh, go externally and, and try to import more shrimp, and that in fact uh, Chinese companies have been um, very uh, interested in discussions with Indian producers, with Indonesian producers, with Ecuador producers, all about bringing in more shrimp to China. Um, I've also heard that uh, some of the major Thai uh, companies are expecting some recoveries of their production uh, in the second half of the year and are finding ways to convince shrimp farmers to get shrimp in their ponds. But we really don't know the outcome. And if, if this uh, 
approach from this Chinese conference uh, actually is true. Uh, there's going to be a big scramble for shrimp with um, uh, results that will set us back a few years uh, to what prices were maybe similar to the BP oil spill. Today's SeafoodNews.com video is brought to you by the Alaska Seafood Marketing Institute. Alaska has been protecting wild and sustainable seafood for generations and adheres to the most recognized and internationally accepted set of guidelines written by the United Nations Food and Agriculture Organization. For recipes and additional information, visit WildAlaskaFlavor.com.